in the previous video, we covered the basic of making lead dioxide coated titanium electrode. This time we'll focus on refining the process and adding a second layer of lead dioxide for better performance. We'll also dive into a better way of making tin tetrachloride and antimony trichloride in order to make a much better ATO pre-coating. First off, we're gonna take a look at the titanium etching process. Etching titanium is crucial because it helps ensure there is no insulating titanium dioxide which will reduce the conductivity and make the coating bad. You'll need some hydrochloric acid, as I always use my 23% from the store, but anything above this concentration will work. You can also use oxalic acid and a pinch of a fluoride salt. I boiled my titanium in hydrochloric acid for like an hour until it had become a very deep purple. In fact, it's so purple that my phone struggles to show the real color and makes it look a little bit more blue. Last time, I forgot to keep it boiling continuously, which could have caused issues, so this time we are ensured that we will have no problem. Another detail is that when you have finished etching the titanium, you should add on the ATO pre-coating very fast, otherwise the titanium will again start to oxidize in the air into titanium dioxide. If you don't know what is an ATO coating, don't worry because I will explain it later on the video, or you can also watch the first video on this whole process. Alright, so now onto the second step in which we will make tin tetrachloride. The tin tetrachloride is one of the ingredients we need for the ATO coating. I showed a way to make it in the last video using metastanic acid, but it's a bit difficult to do properly. So this time I will show another way that is actually pretty easy, but kinda unconventional. The materials we need are copper, hydrochloric acid, hydrogen peroxide, and of course some tin metal. First, we weight approximately 13 grams of copper scrap and dissolve it in hydrochloric acid with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. Alright, so let's say we put like what? A little bit less than 100 mils, something like this. And then we're gonna add some copper, uh, some some of the hydrogen peroxide, just like so. And we can already see the coloration. So it's probably dissolving already. Let's take a look closely. Yeah, as you can see, the color is, is getting more vibrant. It's, it's starting to get dissolved, I think. This small wire. So yeah, basically, yeah, we're just gonna dissolve it like this. The next day, all of the copper was dissolved, so I boiled the solution down to get a copper chloride. Then, I dried it into its brown anhydrous form into the furnace as well as some glassware. I now weighted 7 grams of tin metal and put it in this two-neck flask after the copper chloride. I assembled the rest of the apparatus and we should be ready to start the reaction. After heating, the tin melted, it started reacting and still in the chlorine of the copper to make a desert tin tetrachloride and copper metal. As the tetrachloride is generated, we can observe a white smoke which is it decomposing into tin dioxide on contact with the water vapors from the air. For some reason, the receiving flask turned pink and the tunic flask turned red, yellow and black. I think the black is actually an alloy of unreacted tin and copper, but no idea about the rest. Anyway, because I didn't cut the tin in small pieces, this caused the yield to be pretty bad at 2.5mm, but it's still enough for what we need. Now let's do the third step. Antimony trichloride is used as a dopant in the ATO coating to improve binding and conductivity. To make it, we'll need some antimony, some hydrochloric acid, and also a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. First, I'll start by crushing some of those chunks I received in the mortar to get approximately 10 grams of antimony trichloride. As you can see, the crystal structure inside is really beautiful. I then weighted 100 grams of my 23% hydrochloric acid, which is a big excess but it's fine because it'll make the reaction faster. It's pretty straightforward reaction, but it can be slow especially if you don't have an excess of hydrochloric acid or finely powered antimony. 
Like before, be cautious with all of these reactions because some of the compounds involved are toxic, especially the antimony and the lead ones. I put the hydrochloric acid and antimony in a reflux for a few hours, but beware that it might take up to a day. Another important thing to speed up the reaction is to periodically add a drop or two of hydrogen peroxide. Do not add too much at once or the solution will want to get out of the apparatus because of the gas generated. Now that all of the antimony is dissolved, I'll isolate the product by evaporating the excess solution. Also, just be aware that antimony trichloride is pretty hard to crystallize because it's very hygroscopic. So as long as you manage to at least, let's say, solidify the solution into a paste, it should be fine. In the fourth step, we're gonna prepare the ATO coating. But what is really an ATO coating? Basically, it's acting like a bridge between the metallic titanium substrate and the lead dioxide extend layer. If, hypothetically, you try to cut up just straight titanium, the lead dioxide will just fall out and never adhere properly. So anyway, to make the ATO solution, we need 2.6 grams of tin tetrachloride and 0.26 grams of antimony trichloride in ethanol or methanol. I also bubbled some HCl gas through the ethanol so that the tin tetrachloride is more stable and won't decompose. Once that is done, we take our etched titanium and apply the solution with a pipette and then blast it until the smoke is minimal. This smoke is caused by the tin tetrachloride decomposing into tin dioxide forming our ATO layer. We repeat this step for 20 times and then for the 21st time we heat it a bit stronger until it changes color to a more yellowish coat. So now that we have our ATO plated titanium, the last step is to coat it with lead dioxide. But there are actually two different plating baths that we can use. I already showed the alpha plating in the last video using lead 2 oxide and sodium hydroxide. This alpha bath is always needed and sometimes might be sufficient by itself, but if you want a really good electrode, the best is to also do a second layer of beta lead dioxide. The solution required for this beta bath is 200 grams per liter of lead nitrate and 80 grams per liter of copper nitrate. The bath should be heated between 50 and 60 degrees, but it's not as important as for the alpha. So if you go 10 over, it's still fine. And finally, the electrode should be plated at 4 to 8 milliamp per square centimeters. The good thing with this bath is that it plays faster than the first one, and it also looks cool because of the copper. So this one is blue, the beta is blue, and the alpha is orange. So it's actually pretty easy to see which one is which. As you can see, the electrode looks much smoother than last time. I will not do the testing in this video, because I will instead do a separate video on how to make perchlorate from salt using this exact electrode. At the time I'm writing this video, I have finished filming the perchlorate video and got some very nice results. Next video will be a small one on making exploding antimony, and then the one after will be the perchlorate video. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Okay, so I had my water pump in the water, so I retrieved it and now I have a bowl of ice.